Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Sammy Caps. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most anticipated classes of Path of Exile 2's early access on November 15th, the Druid. Now there are a total of 12 classes in the full game of Path of Exile 2, and it's speculated that six to eight are gonna be playable on November 15th. The Druid class is one of those classes, again, that is speculated to be playable on November 15th. Now, in a couple of weeks, hopefully, we are going to get that live stream from Grinding Gear Games. And during that live stream, my hope is that they are going to cover and dot the I's and cross the T's of all these question marks that we all have. How much early access is really going to cost? Who's getting in? What is the process? How many acts are going to be available on November 15th? Which classes are going to be playable? All of them, six to eight. All these questions that are looming right now, hopefully will be answered in this live stream that is speculated to happen end of October, beginning of November. I suspect the beginning of November. Regardless, it's a couple of weeks away. So my hope is these questions are going to get answered. In the meantime, I wanted to do a video, a series of videos, sorry, on all the classes that are being speculated that are going to be playable on November 15th, the 6 to 8. We have already done a bunch of those videos. And if you haven't seen them, Go to my YouTube channel, Sammy Caps, and you'll see them, and you can watch those as well. We're going to continue until we cover the six to eight, and then hopefully we'll get confirmation and we'll bring more information to you as we get it. In this video, we're going to explore everything we know so far about the Druid from its transformative abilities to its combat playstyle, plus we got some exclusive clips from Grindy Gear Games with game director Jonathan Rogers himself breaking down the Druid mechanics. And in reference to those clips, this is a about 13 minute video from Grinding Gear Games themselves. Now this video was originally from ExileCon and was also shown at Gamescon 2024. So please keep that in mind when you're watching the video. All this information, guys, is a moving target. So please remember when you're watching this video. And I do want to say the premise around my series of videos around the classes that are speculated to be playable on November 15th is not to do a deep dive into the mechanics, a deep dive into all the skills available. That is not the point of this series of videos. The point of these videos is to give you an, an initial first look at what we know so far on really just how the character, the class looks and feels and what the play style potentially will be like. And again, I wanted to create these videos because I have a lot of players in my community that have never played Path of Exile, have never stepped foot into Ray class. And I have a lot of new people coming to my channel. Thank you very much for the support, guys, that are coming to my channel because of my PoE2 content that, again, have never played Path of Exile. So this is really for the new player coming to Path of Exile 2 that has no idea what these classes are going to look like, feel like. That is the premise of these videos, is to give those players an initial look. I have about a 13 minute video from Grinding Gear Games and Jonathan does a great job in illustrating how the Druid plays, looks and feels like. So without further ado, this is the Druid class. Hi, I'm Jonathan Rogers, one of the game directors on Path of Exile 2. In Path of Exile 2, you can pick from one of 12 character classes. Each character has a combination of primary attributes that they focus on. Today, we'd like to show off a character who specializes in strength and intelligence, the Druid. In human form, the Druid is a spellcaster who channels the fury of nature on the battlefield, a walking natural disaster. But get up close and you'll find out why the Druid also focuses on strength. You can transform yourself into one of several wild beasts. Today, we want to show off the bear form. Transformation in PoE 2 happens automatically when you use a bear attack. 
Use Bear Maul and your character will transform into a bear into a meaty swing. Use a spell and your character transforms back into a human and casts it. Hitting enemies with the bear's maul attack will build up rage, which increases your attack damage, so your bear gets stronger with every attack. You can see the glowing runes that indicate rage on your back. Have a lot of weak enemies to take out? This is where you probably want to break out your rampage. Let out a roar and stampede over all enemies in your path, slamming the ground with your paws. The initial roar generates rage, and then the rage is consumed as you charge along. You can use Rampage by itself to travel a short distance, or do some mauling first to build up some rage and travel a significant distance. Now, while the bear is big and strong, this isn't a pure strength class. You don't have as much armor as a warrior would have. In order to protect itself from larger packs, you might want to consider a skill like Furious Slam. This skill is all about stunning rather than damage, so it's quite useful if you're mobbed by smaller monsters and just need to get out of there. Of course, like any PoE2 character, you can always use a dodge roll to get out of danger, since the bear is the slowest of the druid's forms. Making sure the dodge feels reliable and can get you out of any situation is paramount. When you dodge an animal form, your character instantly transforms back with no time penalty, so that you can get out of the way. You can even interrupt a mistimed transformation halfway through. Of course, doing this will mean you pay the slight time cost of having to transform back again, but it's certainly a lot better than dying. Something interesting about the skill is that it's faster to use if you're already standing up. If you're on all fours when you use Furious Slam, then the bear has to stand up first before slamming back down. But use Maul first and the bear will stand up as you swing, which has no time penalty. Then follow up with Furious Slam and your bear will quickly slam down. Much more efficient. Next up, I want to talk about Ferocious Roar. Ferocious Roar is a bear meta skill gem. It allows you to take any Warcry skill that another class like the Warrior might use and allow you to use it as a bear. I'm going to take the Seismic Cry gem and socket it into Ferocious Roar. You can actually socket more than one Warcry and use them all together, but let's just stick to one for now. Seismic Cry pushes enemies back and has some stun chance but the reason we want to use it is for a mechanic called Exerted Attacks. If there are any heavily stunned enemies in range of the Warcry, then your next slam skill will be powered to do double the number of slams. First, I use Furious Slam to stun these enemies. Next, I follow up with Seismic Cry and get the Exerted Attack, and then I slam again. See how two slams triggered? So, that's all well and good, but how about we try that again using Rampage? First, get a bit of Rage, slam to stun the enemies, Seismic Cry to get the exert, and then Rampage around to do insane amounts of damage. So we've covered some of the bear side of the druid, but how is he as a spellcaster? Now of course we want to maximize the amount of time you spend in your animal forms, so most of the spells targeted at the druid tend to be things that last a long time or provide tactical options on the battlefield. The first and probably simplest of these is Lightning Storm. Pass it on the ground and you get an area where monsters are continuously struck by bolts of lightning. The bolts don't do much damage, but they shock monsters, which is a debuff that increases all damage on them, meaning it's a great spell to use before going in as a bear. So, that's going to increase your damage, but as I mentioned before, the bear form of the druid could use some defenses as well. The bear in particular is the slowest attacking of the druid's forms. He hits hard, but if he gets swarmed too much, it will result in your death. That's why Tornado is so useful. Tornado sucks monsters in, allowing you to split up packs and deal with groups separately, or pin monsters in place and set up combos with your other skills. The Tornado doesn't really move big monsters much, so you can actually use it to separate a boss from its minions too. The Druid also has the ability to summon animal companions. This is another really useful defense because wolves can take aggro from you, keeping monsters away. In addition, the wolves howl as they are summoned, putting a temporary debuff on enemies that makes them more vulnerable to critical strikes, and giving you a reason to resummon them in combat. The last druid spell we're going to talk about today is Volcano. 
You can cast it quickly like this and it will spawn just a few projectiles. Or you can hold down the button to channel it for longer, which will make it fire a whole bunch of projectiles when it spawns, doing a lot more damage. The volcano sticks around firing its little projectiles for a long time, so it's another good skill to cast before turning into a bear. Now, the reason you're going to want to turn into a bear after using the volcano is that any slam near the volcano results in it spewing out even more projectiles. And if you thought that was a lot, then Rampage is even better, because it does two slams every time it hits the ground. And you can run around the volcano. Now, if you've been paying attention, you might have realised that this is going to be extra good with Seismic Cry, which we were using earlier to double the number of slams. So, first we're going to cast Volcano. Then Furious Slam till you stun something, Seismic Cry to get the double slams, then Rampage around while the Volcano spews out a stupid number of projectiles. This combo would have been even better if we'd remembered to cast our Lightning Storm first, but getting time for that seems tricky. It would also have been nice if the monsters were affected by the crit debuff that my wolves do when I first summon them. This is where some meta gems to automate some elements can come in handy. Here's a gem called Cast While Channeling. If we add Lightning Storm to the skill, we can cast it automatically while we channel the volcano as we set up our combo. Cast While Channeling is an ongoing effect, so enabling the skill will cost us Spirit, which is a new resource in PoE2 used specifically for these kinds of skills. If you look at the top left of the screen as we channel, we can see the energy building up to cast the Lightning Storm. So long as we channel Volcano for long enough, the Lightning Storm will also be cast on the same targeted location. Currently, Cast While Channeling is active in Reserving Spirit in both our human and bear forms. This means that any channeling skills we use as a bear technically will also cast the Lightning Storm. We can actually do this with Rampage right now, but it's not the best because we would prefer to stack the Lightning Storm on top of our Volcano, rather than just casting it randomly as we're rampaging around. We're also unnecessarily reserving spirit in our bear form we could be using for something else. So let's fix that. I'm going to go into the skill options for the skill and disable it in my bear form. We showed at ExileCon how you could use skill options to control which weapon set to use when casting skills. But you can also use the same interface to enable or disable which buffs you would like to have active in your different weapon sets too, without having to recast them all the time. And shapeshifting counts as a weapon set. Now when I change to a bear, the effect and the spirit reservation goes away, and when I change back to a human again, it's back automatically. So, now that we have some extra spirit available as a bear, why don't we make our life a little bit easier by automating one of our other skills? This is the Cast on Melee Stun meta gem. I'm going to put Summon Wolf in Cast on Melee Stun, so that whenever I stun a sufficient number of enemies while I'm a bear, it will summon another wolf. This is great, because usually when I'm stunning, it's because I'm about to do my exerted attack slam combo. When wolves come out, they howl, adding the crit debuff to the monsters, right when I need it. It also helps keep my wolves alive and summoned at all times without me having to do it manually. So, last but not least, let's talk about the skill tree. At ExileCon we showed how you could dual spec your character so that different weapons can use different passives. Well, as I said before, the bear form counts as another weapon set for specialization purposes, so he gets a tree too. If I open my passive tree, you can see how I'm near a melee damage cluster and a spell damage cluster. By holding shift, I can allocate these passives in my human form, and these ones as a bear. Now, when I change between human and bear form, my passives reallocate automatically. So, here we are at the blind beast. The goblins have enslaved a huge behemoth and gouged out its eyes. Now they're sending it in to fight you while they watch. What have they done to this creature?
is here. Shameful. And there we have it. With a little bit of customization, we have a build that can combine many different active skills to do some really interesting effects. At the same time, your skill tree reconfigures automatically at the right time, and your buffs reconfigure automatically as well. You can even cast certain skills automatically. But we also haven't lost the dynamics of combat. Many skills interact with each other, and the ones you choose to use at any different moment depend a lot on what enemies you face or what situation you're in right at this moment. And at just the right time, you might be able to combine all your skills in one crazy combo, get some satisfying screen covering spam, and do some crazy damage. Now, these are just some of the skills targeted at the Druid in POE 2. Man, I have to tell you, this is going to be a tough decision for me. As of right now, I still don't know which class I will be starting with in early access. And I have to say, every new video that I do on all these playable classes that are speculated to be for early access, it just makes it more confusing. That Truid build looks really, really Awesome. Now, I do want to mention that the Druid is a strength int build, and it will have the same starting point as the Templar, which is also a strength int build. Now, it looks like, again, speculation, that the Templar, the other strength int build class, is not going to be playable on November 15th. But again, we will hopefully get all these I's dotted and T's crossed and confirmation on what classes are going to be available on November 15th. But right now, the Templar does not look like it's going to be available. But regardless, the Druid and Templar are going to have the same starting point in the Path of Exile 2 passive skill tree. So here's the big question. What do you think of the Druid class? Will you be playing it when Path of Exile 2 launches on November 15th and is actually playable on November 15th? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on the rest of our early access class series and anything and everything around Path of Exile and Path of Exile 2. As we get the information, early access, anything PoE2 related, it'll be here as soon as we get it. So hit that sub button. I would really appreciate your support. And as always, thank you for watching and we'll hope to see you next time. Take care. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.